Hey, Snow Tracks YouTubers, it's time for another insightful walk around. Here we are in uh, beautiful West Yellowstone, Montana at the Snowshoot annual event where we get to try out all next year's snowmobiles. And we've uh, just rung out a, uh, a new model for next year. And we thought we would bring you a full tilt walk around in advance of our full tilt uh, test ride, which you'll see coming up uh, next fall. So here we have it. This is the newest uh, member of the XRS family. What we have here is an MXZ XRS 600R E-Tech. Oh yeah, it's a ski do. And back here, it's a 137. Just brush that off. It has a 1.5 uh, inch lug ice ripper track. It comes with KYB EA easy adjust clickers, which are very, very similar in their operation to uh, the Fox QS3. You do have a few more uh, moves of compression and low speed and high speed compression. There's another clicker. You probably can't see it because there's so much snow here, but it's down here. There it is. There's the top of it. So you've got high and low speed compression dampening. You've got preload adjustability. There's uh, the same adjustability on the front arm shock and on the rear arm shock in the, uh, in the R motion. So that kind of covers the suspension. It has uh, the G5 architecture, which is really important. This year, all the 600s got the G5. And there's a couple things that are very important about the G5 architecture from a technical standpoint. And one of them that's very important is this. The G5 600 and 850 both get a new proprietary four mount uh, engine cradle system. So there's no longer just three mounts to hold the motor. There is four, and I'm going to show you the difference that that makes. Now the 600 engine is inherently very smooth, but it, it is incredibly smooth with this new engine mount system. Let me just rev it up a little bit for you. See how smooth that is? Now, don't panic. That was revving very high and it wasn't engaging. It's because we're at 6,600 feet here. And quite frankly, if you haven't done this or you haven't had the opportunity to ride at altitude, you'll be shocked at how uh, it kills the power output of any uh, internal combustion engine. So uh, the OEs have spe uh, specifications that they uh, adjust the clutching. So it, it, that includes raising the engagement speed so the engine doesn't bog or get laggy out of the hole. Uh, that's just because we're here. Okay, more G5 stuff. Uh, you got a new look, and we've talked about it a lot this year. It's a more organic look, and if you're into organic, I think this is it. It's more uh, smooth, where the, where the uh, G4 was kind of crispy and uh, edgy. This is a softer look. Uh, I like the look. I like these panels on the side in particular. Oh yeah, and you get LED headlights now. So that's, uh, that's a cool thing. Skidoo was kind of falling behind the competition in that department. So there's a, a, a number of things that the XRS includes, but there's a couple things it doesn't include. And the one thing it doesn't include you might be disappointed by is you cannot get smart shocks on this 600R. You can get it on the 850, but not the 600 and you cannot get the 10.2 inch display on the 600R. Those two things are unavailable, but you still get the full on uh, G5 bodywork. Now, uh, out the back here, you've got a 137 inch tunnel. You've got your, uh, uh, your fastening points for all your uh, link accessories, and uh, you've got your battery behind the seat and the running boards that are on the XRS are a little bit different than just on a standard issue MXC. They're deeper and a little bit wider and uh, they're very comfortable. This sled uh, ergonomically is uh, really comfortable, but one thing it doesn't have that we thought it would have, and Skidoo is moving away from it, is the adjustable riser. The rationale for that is, is that most people that they surveyed who had the adjustable rider basically fiddled with it when they got the sled, set it, left it alone, and didn't do anything with it. So they're saying, we like it because we ride different sleds every day and mix and match them so we can, we can make an ergo package that we like, but we're not the, the, the people who are buying snowmobiles, we're just the media. So you've got a fixed riser now. There are, they are available in a couple of different heights. You can order them from your dealer or your dealer may in fact have them in stock. 
Uh, Pilot X skis, really good skis. This sled, the G5, does demonstrate a little better uh, steering and handling. We've griped about it quite a bit because it has the rack steering system in the front, which is to stop bump steer. So bump steer is when the, the suspension cycles through its stroke up and down. And as, as a result of cycling through its stroke, this tie rod here becomes shorter and longer. It doesn't literally become shorter and longer, but it does push and pull. And so what happens is if you don't have a steering rack to correct that, you get this through the bumps, toe in, toe out, toe in, toe out. The sled will shake its head. It becomes a handful. It's not fun to ride through bumps fast. This is fun to ride through bumps fast because of the rack steering. It makes a big difference. It's not a, it's not a small deal. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> it's a cool feature for an XRS kind of guy, but you can't see it. <laughs> it's almost impossible to see it unless you take off all the body work and uh, the exhaust at the front to see it because it's right in the pit of the front of the bulkhead in the belly of the sled. Not the belly of the whale, the belly of the sled. Okay, so um, ergonomically, you've got the G5's uh, reformed area riding perch here. You've got the uh, regular screen, their seven inch screen, which is, which is very good. This is a new switch cluster. And it is a, it is a, a whiz bang setup. It's beautifully lit. I'm gonna say a couple things that are critical of it, but one I can't say anything critical is how it is lit. This at night is really something to see, but it doesn't have, it's not intuitive enough. You can't tell the hot grip button by feeling it from another button. So when you're looking around with your thumb with your glove on, it's like, what am I gonna push next? Here's your high beam. That should be out of there. That should be up here, last place you need it. Your heaters are the number one thing you need. Your start and reverse should be either yellow and red or red, red, yellow, yellow. They're just black and they're not in a really comfortable position either. I find with gloves on, I just don't find this intuitive. I think that the system they had on the G4 was the bomb. Uh, it was, you could feel it. Once you learned it, you could feel the edges of the uh, hot grip uh, and thumb warmer control and the starter and the RER control. So that was, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that was kind of a disappointment. It's not terrible. Um, you know, I mean, you're not going to lose your mind over it, but you will have to go through a bit of a learning cycle. So for those of you who are really observant, you may have noticed this trick little deal here. This has an all new complete brake system, caliper, rotor, uh, master cylinder, and lever. Check this out. This is motorcycling. You can adjust the depth that this comes into the handlebar or stays out just by turning this. Is that cool or what? You know what? I've been riding this here in Yellowstone and I'm thinking to myself as I'm riding it, how did we go so many years without having this? For those of you who are real history buffs, you'll remember that the original Apex and its and consequent uh, models after the Apex, like year after year, had this exact same setup. But that's all. all. Yamaha was the only one who did it. This is an idea that deserves to be copied. Let's just look down here on the running board and you'll see that there's a new brake disc cover you can't see that there's a new brake disc skid plate because this uh, disc is 20 millimeters larger in diameter. So that means it hangs down a little bit further underneath, uh, underneath the running board here. And uh, they have a, a guard from, from the bottom and they have this cover from the top. The most important thing you need to know, it's a four piston caliper and it works really good. What a difference, an exponential difference in the way it works and the way it modulates. There's a lot more modulation. There's a lot more depth of feel. It's, it's, a, it's a really big improvement. It's on all XRS MXZs and Renegade XRS. It's standard this year. Uh, you've got the G5 Mega Trunk. Everybody likes that. And you know, it's some credible storage. Of course, you guys who are Link customers are going to, you know, fill this up with all kinds of uh, different accessories. It, Skidoo does such an awesome job at, at offering uh, stuff to make the whole snowmobiling experience better. Um, our motion, we talked a little bit about that. It is really uh, still second to none in the business. It's a great suspension system. It really works well. This one is adjustable because of the EA, Easy Adjust KYB shocks. And uh, I just want to say this too about KYB. 
KYB makes great stuff. Their stuff is super high quality. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Fox at all. I'm just saying KYB is the other people in the, in the snowmobile shock business. Um, and there's Walker Evans as well for Polaris, but KYB makes good stuff. So uh, I think that pretty much covers this new model. And uh, you wanna uh, pay attention to some of the details on this, some of the things that you do get, some of the things you don't get and hopefully I've helped you uh, to understand a few of those things. So if you could do me a favor, could you please like and subscribe to our channel? We really appreciate you doing that and uh, we're getting really close to 100,000 subscribers and we wanna make it this season if at all possible. Thanks for your time and attention and hope this was worthwhile for you.